up. So if, if you come in on a different system, if you're not in the Xbox, they can still get you rocking and rolling and make you feel like you're at home. I'm glad you said that, Scott. We always get those questions. How are they using the different controller? How are they using the different controller? It's those adapters, and they're pretty easy to use. You just go look that up online. You plug the controller right into the adapter. The adapter plugs, plugs into the Xbox, and good to go. But the X button. <laughs> oh, the X button. Oh, the if you're not used to it, it can, it can ruin your day between the two systems. Yeah, absolutely. First and 10 at the 32, and Kiv will have it first. Get ready for some fireworks, folks. This is the best two offenses in the Ultimate League. Yeah, bunch bowl part two. <laughs> I like the bunch bowl. That's got to go on a t-shirt somewhere. See plenty more bunch bowls before this season, though. Oh, absolutely. So first and 10 at the 45. Hester is solo to the right. Low snap. And you talk about that low snap animation, and if you're playing at home, you know you're about to get one of two things, either the play action or the delay. Low snap, high snap, you know it's going to be some type of play action or the draw. Yeah, it's the only type of plays that that animation can trigger on, so you're very correct in that assessment, Scott. Nothing Amos could do on that low throw in the Tyreek Hill. This Paul Warfield and Tyreek Hill have sort of changed the narrative when it comes to the passing game. As Kiv makes a loss of six there, pushing back to the 41 out of field goal range. This is a big game for Ghost. He's really fallen behind so far, and which is shocking seeing as he had so much success winning that belt at the club championship. But he's not playing with that same sense of urgency. If you go, so I like that, you know, he's up there. He, he doesn't talk a lot of trash. He's very respectful. He's not complaining a lot. A lot. But you get in point in the season where you got to turn into a dog. You can't give anybody an inch. You've worked way too hard to make it this far into the season. And now's a great time to turn it around. That's a player like Young Kim. Finds Devin Hester at the 24. Four for four for Carson Wentz. He's got a fresh set of downs just outside the red zone. They're on the opening drive between these two offensive juggernauts. See that corner strike play. The one thing that makes this gun bunch so effective, Scott, is it's so easy to run that flood concept out of that bunch side. So you got someone leak to the flat, and then your receiver go to the corner. And Big interception by Ghost. A late throw in Amos. Able to get in front. That's got to come right now. And I'm looking at PB settled down in this route. Got open. Kiv goes to the other side. Big play by the Kiva. By Ghost, I'm sorry. So Ghost will have it at the 20 after the touchback. That's a rare bad read we see from young Kiv. We're so used to him being so prolific, making limited mistakes on offense, and to see him throw a book down there in the red zone is very uncharacteristic. If you're a ghost, you need to take advantage of that rare mistake from Kim. We know about the offenses, the West Coast. What are you running on defense for Kim? Kim's in that New England Patriots defensive playbook. If I didn't tell you ghost, he runs that Kansas City Chiefs defense. Those are two of the most popular defenses we've seen in all of Ultimate League. Yeah, this is pretty much the meta through and through. If you're not familiar with some of the video game tech, you know, terminology, meta is pretty much what everybody is running at the competitive level. Yeah, and those two defenses, they have the schemes that people like. The New England Patriots obviously have both a 3-4 formation and a 4-3, but they also, the only playbook with that nickel 3-3-5 three, three, odd, you'll see that from Kiv, you'll see that from Skimbo. And then with Ghost, he's in that Kansas City Chiefs defense. And one of the things that makes that so popular is that nickel 3-3-5 defense that we're seeing a lot of players run, most notably Blocky, who's currently undefeated in the Ultimate League. These are the two best passing offenses 
in the league right now. And a nice job. <laughs> Playmaker in Jackson up to the 24. Goes getting his offense going. We saw a similar playmaker out of Tweez over there in the Legend Conference. He likes to let that drag run all the way and then boom, right up the field. He is, you need to have the time to do that. Hands it off to Walker. And so, second and 13 at the 27. Of course, we got two games going on simultaneously. The other one being Joel CP and Noble Stevie J. And I'm not afraid to say it in the back. Joel said he was going to come out here and give Stevie J the business. So we'll be checking in on that one as we move along through our dual games. Dot. And that's Jackson. And he goes. Up. Strikes first. And it looks like both the guys whose backs are against the wall trying to build momentum. We heard Joel in the off-stream match getting animated and Am saying fight and then Ghost gets a stop on Kiv on the first possession and then dials up a crispy hot one. Take the lead 7-0. The underdogs are fighting. The 121 to go in the first. Kiv's going to get it at a turnover. On his first drive, through an interception in the end zone. As Amos was able to get back and pick him off. Let's take a look at that touchdown pass again. Oh, that's just a hot one by Ghost. Good route combination. Distracted kids use a defender. And look at him. Hassan Spall, Brunswick, New Jersey. Oh, he's getting the momentum going. And just to tell you how hard kids' offense is to stop, Scott, so far, in the Ultimate League, we've only seen two 300 passing yard performances, and both of those performances have come from Young Kim. So we know Good we day. can air it out. And there's Warfield, can't hang on. Warfield right up the seam. There's some two legends. As Renfro was able to knock it away, and now it's double box action. Our first look at Joel CP. And Stevie J. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Scott, I was in the back room spending some time with Joel CP. It's cool. We get access like that in between these games. And Joel CP was a man on a mission back there. He's just telling you, I'm not going out like this, G. I'm turning the season around. I'm going to fight. There's no, he said, no way I'm going to let Stevie run on me. He looks like he's starting to get some momentum. So stepping away from the goes and Young Kiv game to get over here with Joel and Stevie J. Joel on the drive. Has time all day. Just gonna throw it away. I mean, it was a pretty sweet little Saturday back there. Went to Bed Bath and Beyond, yeah, looking downfield, didn't know if there'd be time. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. That's what happens when you rush two. Ariota. Good read. Low throw to Ingram. He's feeling it. Yeah, Joel CP. He means business in his rookie season. First year being eligible to compete in the MCS. Made the Madden Challenge. Now he's here in Ultimate League. You talked about it. Old. His back's against the wall now, RG. He's got to get something going. Yeah, and he will. He will. That's a young, hungry cat right there. He doesn't mess around. What's 0-0 zero, zero between these two Thundercats? Yeah, I should have said Thunder. I said young, <laughs> hungry cat. That doesn't sound intimidating. Hey, Joel, go back. Little cat. Yeah, you know, he might go back. Listen to that. No, and Joel, he'll rip me a new one for that. Uh, it's a touchdown game over here. Kibbs got it at the nine. Combining for a hundred yards here in this first quarter. A little corner route, feed inbounds, and 
Let's take a look at what happened down here. Goes, had it in the red zone and threw an interception that Larry Wilson said, thank you, sir. So that's how the quarter will come to an end. Seven nothing for Goes. As we've seen a couple turnovers in the red zone between Goes and Young Kiv. Then Joel CP and Stevie J tied at zero at the end of the first. Start of the second quarter, let's go check in on Joel CP and Stevie J. A little cross-divisional action here in the Elite Conference. Scoreless. Joel was telling us that he was ready to box up this run. He's done so through one, but now you, you gotta try to turn some of your possessions into points. Yeah, Joel hasn't looked fantastic in this gun spread like he did in week one against Ghost. He's not moving the ball as, effective, as efficiently on offense. Bo Jackson's going to lose a yard. Five carries for 11. Ball in the red zone at the start of the second quarter. Needs to get down to the seven. Bo Jackson. Boy, had a blocker out in front. That was Andrew Whitworth, big number 77. And for this Bo Jackson, Scott, we, we talk about this all types of different player items and much. So you can get a 99 overall, a 95 overall Bo. The Bo that Joel's using with is only an 88 overall. Goat edition, Bo Jackson. Go. Cost you 49 cap. By the way, that was not Andrew Whitworth. It's a 77 right there at left guard. Don't have him on my roster. Whitworth is out at left tackle. So he stumbles down to the two. Second and goal. to the left. Oh, we had it. By the way, Reuben Foster, left guard for the Steelers. He watches some Madden football, watches some, some of the stuff we do. It's always cool when you hear the NFL yeah. players, you know. How, how long with the Bears? He's into it. Uh-oh. Stevie J getting stinge on the goal line. That's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Come on, man. Got to take your three here. Looks like we might be in for a defensive game. But, you know, Stevie J has sort of lulled us to sleep, thinking that a low scoring is going to be a tight game. And, you know, he might run the pitch three or four times. But if he gets that one breakaway, that one seam, he's gone. He's through the house. Yeah, and talking to the players in the back, they said, you think you have run defense. Stevie's about to get on his horse. You think you have run defense. He motions the receiver on that pitch. You, you feel like you got him locked up. And then all it takes is that one cut. And he's off to the cribbo. Take a look at that rushing attack. <laughs> Through four <laughs> games right there. <laughs> 187 yards per game, 11 touchdowns through your first four games of Ultimate League. Yeah, he's in a conference of prolific passers. And so he's got double the rushing yards of anybody else in the Elite Conference right now. Well, under that Noble jersey, he wears a needed shirt that says, hashtag more pitch. And that represents him very well because he is a master at that halfback pitch play. Goes to Walker and Herschel. Right there at the 47, going to depend on the spot. He's going to be just shy. And what you're seeing here, this is what opens up the pitch. He's running a lot of halfback dive, a lot of inside runs that you end up having to respect. And as soon as you start doing that, he tosses it to the outside. And Big, come on, man. What come a on, shed man. by Leonard come Williams. On. Fight for I don't me, even please. know if I could call that a shed. He just what pushed stop? the center. The game is over. Pushing. 
and Come broke on. his way through. Bull Come rush, on, and Joel please. talking to me, he said he needs that. He said one of the biggest problems I'm having on defense is I'm just not getting any pressure from my line. Can't get him in any third or fourth and logs. Even after that sack, he only has Stevie at fourth and six. This is a big fourth and six, Cole. Joel has a chance to step up right here. Get some momentum, start turning the season around if you're Joel CP. Needs to get to the 47, maybe even more like the 48 yard line. It's a long six. Oh, that's a back throw. He throws a pick to Larry Wilson. And Wilson, like a loaf of bread, Sunday. switches it to the right oh, hand. On, and he's in. Swaggy. Look at Joel. He's out of his seat. He's amped. Y'all thought it was over? Really? Really? And there he goes. He said, you thought it was over? You must have forgot. I thought I was going to be quiet. And the lead now is 10. And if you don't think Joel CP is going to fight for his ultimate league life, you don't know Joel CP. He's currently one and three. Won the first one, you remember, up in Minnesota, where he gave goes the business for 20 minutes. And he's lost three in a row trying to bounce back here in L.A. That's tough, you know, week after week, get on a losing streak. Trying to turn the tides. The thing I like about Joel is he's one of the few players, he's able to play the game at a high level. He talks trash and gets animated. A lot of players will try to do that, but you can see it obviously throw them off of their game and they get prone to mistakes. Joel seems to be the type of guy, when he's animated and getting in there, seems like he plays better Madden football. Let's get a game update. As goes, doing what he can to get some points on the board here from the 15 over the right side of the end zone for a touchdown. He is up 14, nothing, just under two minutes left in the first half. Well, we talked about it. The guys that got their backs against the wall, hanging out in the basement. Yeah, both Joel CP and Ghost in that Division A of this elite conference sitting at one and three, and both of them fighting hard right now get back in those standings, make things interesting. 75 seconds left in the half. Three timeouts for Stevie J. Ball at the 29. When you're playing competitive Madden, Scott, it's important. When you talk to Joel and Ghost, they both, it's not like they lost their confidence. They knew that they were able to turn this around. And in a long season like this, confidence is key. And for those both of those young players, neither one of them over 21 years old, to keep that confidence after things aren't going their way. That shows a level of maturity that explains why they're here on the big stage. Oh. Shannon Sharp can't hold on. <laughs> this is the number eight player in the world versus the number 10 player in the world. Stevie J, number 10. Both of these guys have combined for almost $50,000 in winnings. But Joel just in his rookie season so good at live events, but he's got off to a rough start. Able to hold Stevie J to three there. And now the Kiva. 35 seconds left in the half over on the left-hand part of your screen. Trying to get a score before the half. Yeah, and this is interesting. He's got Ghost holding Kiv to no points so far in the first half. Not something we're used to seeing from Kiv. Let's see if he can turn it around here. On the seven, clock's ticking. As it to Langford, still has plenty of timeouts. And he's going to burn one. Third and eight. Two touchdowns for Kiv. A touchdown right here would be pivotal. Coming back to win this game. You really don't want to have to settle for three. It's a big third and eight, Scott. It's surprising here in this first half. He hasn't been shut out in a half all season long, nearly averaging 30 points a game. That's the most of the conference. That was Donnie. That was Dottie Hill. by the Kiva. Got both feet and bounce. A deputy dot near the end of the half. Not a league of their own, but you can call him Dottie. How is Madden and Dippin' Dots not partnered up yet? Do we? Do I need to write a sternly letter? That's got to happen. Still it's the ice cream of the future, RG. It's free money. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. I'm with you on that, Cole. Kicks it out of bounds with 13 seconds. I think they still sell dipping Dots in Japan. 
Absolutely. Get us out here. Let us start finding some sponsors. <laughs> Let me loose. <laughs> me and Cole in the boardroom. We'll commentate the whole meeting. <laughs> 13 seconds before the half. Goes does have one timeout if he can get downfield. Be careful here, Ghost. Don't do anything too risky. Mary Gota. I'll just throw it away. So second and 10. Ball at the 40. Seven ticks left in the half. Goes with a touchdown lead. And you mentioned, be smart here. Mariota winds it up one time and overthrows him at the end of the half. But if you're Goes, you gotta be happy with a touchdown lead over Kiv. Even though Kiv got in late there in the half to make it a one possession game. And down on the bottom, 13-3, Joel C.P. getting a late field goal there with a 10-point lead over Stevie J. So we head to the third. It's a seven-point game. Elite Conference Division A, Elite Conference Division B. That makes it a cross-divisional game. And Goes is going to get it first, Archie. That's big. Yeah, that's huge, especially since he let up that touchdown to Kiv before the half. Give yourself a chance to get the ball here, make it two possessions. And in Madden, when you're playing this high level, that's constantly the, the positioning of the game you're fighting for. You want to get up that two possessions and give yourself a cushion and put the pressure on your opponent. Anytime it's a one possession ball game in Madden football, you feel like anything can happen. Everybody's still in the game. So Ghost really could give himself some good cushion here. Could turn something, turn this drive into some sort of points. Couldn't catch that one in traffic. That's going to make it a second and 10. I feel like this game, too, you got to think, Scott, it's going to drag on. This is going to be a long game. These guys pass the ball so much. That it's likely you'll see more incomplete passes than you usually do, which results in more stoppages of the clock, as opposed to a guy like Stevie J, who runs the ball a lot and keeps that clock moving as he's playing. Throws it to the sideline. No. Brings up a third and 10. Look at that. We're already third and 10. We've had a kickoff of only 10 seconds off of the clock so far <laughs> in this third quarter. So it's going to be a grind. A lot more passing over here in the elite conference than we saw on the legend side of things. Oh, that's a bad read. Picked off. Got some space. And Mel Blanc will take it to the 37. If you're a ghost, we've seen him in interviews earlier this season with Skimbo and Adrian talking about, I got the best bunch, the best offense in the country. Can't be saying that stuff and then coming out and throwing Stevie's like that, Scott. That was a book. Yeah, blind read. Then the jump. This is going to be first and five at the 32. He's going to have to call a timeout. I think he was in, what was it? He'll go block or something. That, that, was, that was punt block, wasn't it? I don't know what I saw there. And that's not good. You, you, Ghost, you might need that timeout. In the second half, first half timeouts are one thing, but those second half timeouts are precious. That could come back to bite them. See Stevie J in the red zone on the right side, and on the left, Kim with a rare scramble all the way down to the 13. So we got double red zone action. Stevie's looking for vintage. He got hold on. No. Couldn't get in. But he's got first <laughs> and goal from the one. There'll be a couple QB sneaks over on that side, and Kim. Just overthrowing Devin Hester, second and 10. Remember, an ultimate team, there's no injuries, so. You saw Stevie running around with Mariota taking that big hit. The main risk there is a fumble. But you don't have to be as concerned as you would in real life about protecting that quarterback and making sure he doesn't catch an injury because that, that's, that's not a thing in ultimate team. And there you see, love that side cam. Half his body in the end zone. And that brings Stevie J 
with this extra point. Going to be a field goal game over there on the right side. Kiv outside the red zone now at the 22 over on the left. Trailing by a touchdown. Big third and 18. So it's Kiv. Kiv's got cooked up here. Wentz. Good pocket presence. He's going to get sacked. It's Terrell Suggs getting in there. That's going to make it a 42-yarder. And Kiv doesn't have the strongest kicker. I think he's still rolling without a position Heath out there. That looks like Bailey. It's going to be five. Dan Bailey with 78 kick power, Scott. So he doesn't have the greatest leg for sure. Makes it a four-point game here with 3.30 remaining in the third. Pooch kick to the 25. And goes with smartly laid down. Start his drive from the 31. So Ghost and Joel both start strong in their matchups here, both with their backs against the wall at one and three. But young Kiv and Stevie J both quietly creeping themselves back into both their respective ball games. Ten unanswered for Kiv. Goes, finds B, that's Hill wide open. All the way down to the 42, he's in plus territory. One thing I like about the Ultimate League, Scott, is as the season progresses, you can feel the intensity really start to pick up. These guys get in desperate situations. You start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. There he Odom. There's Jackson. Now at the 22. Halfback, that halfback dig out play. This is the only playbook. This West Coast playbook is the only playbook with this play. That halfback dig out. And there was that post route right there, Scott, that makes that play so effective. If you get time, it can be deadly. And that's why Kemp sends the dogs and makes it second and 20. It's one of those routes that default base defenses don't really guard you need to do something unique whether you take it away yourself you got to man up a safety against the manually move players underneath so they're underneath that route into the box a lot of different things you got to do there Ooh, got away with one and hill steps out at the 15 that's going to make it third and three good tight rope well tight we're speaking of tight rope how about a tight window barely squeeze that pass in there mariota now he gets hit, dropped at the 24, and here comes another field goal. We had a flashback that talked about goes. Here's another key field goal against Kiv. Oh, this looks good. I think this year, though, you've, you've had players, especially with the ability to perfect kick and all the blocks that have happened. It's something that you, you don't spend a lot of time in the lab on, but I think it's gotten some attention. Oh, Ghost practices this, and talk about spending time in the lab, which is essentially practicing. It, it, these guys, it's like the NFL. They come out here, and they run what they practice. So if you're saying, oh, they only run a couple of plays or this, that, and that, these are the plays that they've spent the most time on that they know how to use to handle any type of situation. They, and even though if you see them run the same play and over and over again, they might run that play 25 different ways with hot routes and adjustments just based on the situation. But the point I'm trying to make is you run what you practice, Scott, and there's only so much time in the day, so you got to really pick and choose what you want to work on. And Ghost definitely took some time this year to work on that kicking, which I think was a smart investment. Yeah, you're going to see them pick a play just because it has, kind of like you're talking about, it might have that one route that they know they want, and then they customize the hot, the hot routes around that big play. Yeah, yeah, one minute the running back's on a table route, the next minute he's blocking. One minute the tight end's leaking to the flat, the next minute he's on a drag to the end. And it's all out the same play, but with those pre-play adjustments, you're able to do those type of hot routes and different things. So I hate when I see people say, oh, they just run the same play over and over again. It might be the same base play, but the way that they run it is so different constantly. It's just based on the look you get, and that's what adjustments you'll make. Third and 20. Doing a traffic. That's going to bring up 
Fourth and long from the 15. And are we going to see Kiv punt? I think he has to in this situation. Fourth and 20, backed up on your 15, already down seven. And real quick, so when we're talking about them adjusting out of, out of those different types of plays, that goes for both offense and defense. It's not just an offensive thing. It's not just a defensive thing. It's something that these guys do on both sides of the ball. Oh, no, Kim's going. I don't know about 20, that. It sounds crazy. Your ghost, you got to send the goons. But you can hot route right there at the sticks, a little smart route. What, what did Mr. Burns, you said, release the hounds. <laughs> There they Excellent. Are. Excellent. So Ghost will take over at the five. Good Montgomery Burns impression here from Ghost. Sends the hounds. The hounds get the kid. That was Ed Reed who came in on a corner blitz. And now you got first and goal at the five. You'll see some players do this because they feel like it might be easier to hold the door from the five. Yeah, but in this situation, if you're Ghost, unless he does something dumb, you, you just got to run the ball here. Don't do anything risky. Kill as much clock as you want. You could at least take this to the fourth quarter. You run the ball three times. Kick your field goal, make it two possessions, and then get back on defense. It's very simple. Kim, Kim put him in an easy situation here. He just needs to handle it correctly. He's had some questionable decisions down here in the red zone. Times that he should have taken three. Especially in the early in the season. First blocky. End up losing by a field goal because he refused to take one late. Cost him the game. He got a little too aggressive. Not this time, though. I, I, I think Ghost is just going to be content with running this ball and taking this to the fourth quarter. Of course, the chances you might take early in the season, once you get this tougher part of the schedule, especially against a player like Kiv, will take the points where you can get them. Nice passes. Go the air. Yeah. And there's that nice. wheel route. We've highlighted it before, and it leads to a touchdown. Oh, my gosh. I, 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 I mean, it worked, and that's great. But that, that makes me nervous, Scott. I mean, that, if he throws a pick right there or something goes wrong, he, he's not going to forgive himself. You saw a defender within the vicinity. But hey, you, you make the call, it works. No harm, no foul. So Kiv, take a look at this again. Here's that wheel ride. He's going to turn up field. And you see you got a drag coming across, and then the wheel route coming right off the edge of that drag. And that's what makes it so deadly. Yeah, you got to go guard that drag. You leave it up to your AI to guard that wheel. And not able to convert. Of course, the other thing is you bail out with your user to get over there, and they scramble with Mariota for the touchdown. Yeah, if there's no spy on the field. I mean, that's just there's a, a lot going on. It's a gutsy <laughs> decision, and we talked to Josh. When Josh Scobie was with us in Jacksonville, he made a good point. He said, hey, these Madden players are pretty smart, and I think one thing that helps them is they can be more aggressive because they don't got to worry about getting fired like a real NFL coach. You're your own coach, so. It's, it's all on you. So at the end of the third, Ghost takes a commanding 14-point lead on Kiv after the turnover on downs. And, of course, on the bottom of your screen there, it's a three-point game now. Stevie J has come roaring back, held Joel scoreless in the third quarter. So we head to the fourth quarter. Joel with a three-point lead over Stevie J. Of course, he told us in the back he was going to beat him by 40. It's only a field goal game right now heading to the fourth. Yeah, they're in a tight one over there. And I was watching both of their body language during that small break, and it's intense. Both of those players are locked in focus. I know this is a big game. Stevie J. Second. And nine at the 49. Jay with a chance to improve his record to three and two. <laughs> Control, you're trying to prevent yourself from going to one and four with a loss here, which would be devastating. If it holds up, I mean, Stephen Jay can get a win, then 
He and Kiv are tied again. They're in Division B. Yeah, absolutely. How about blocking? <laughs> absolutely. Block. Number 16 seed. Been the surprise of the tournament thus far. And Let's Ingram. go, baby. Let's go. Stevie J goes up top. Steven Javaruski comes up big to take the lead against Joel C.P. 14 unanswered. Stevie J's got a good support system behind him. He's got his girlfriend, Lexi, mom, and Nett. And his dad, Stevie Sr., constantly watching these events, rooting them on. We saw them all in yeah, Orlando. Orlando at the yeah. club championship in attendance. He said, hey, you get a chance, shot him out, G. Well, he just gave me a chance with that big touchdown play. Look at this. They were rooting on their son hard, and his dad was yelling at us when we weren't showing the Stevie game. Look at that intensity, too. You, you meet Stevie J in person. He's a nice, soft-spoken guy. You, you get him going on the Madden sticks. He'll show you some intensity. Ball at the 24. He's been grinding for a couple years to finally get to this point. Exactly. Barely missed it last year. That just shows perseverance, Scott. I'm telling you, his first year competing, he won an underground tournament, didn't make any other noise besides that. He was telling me, gee, you're going to be calling my games at some of these events one day. And I said, you know, I kind of looked at him like, I hear that from everybody. We'll, we'll, we'll see. i let your game do your talking. The next year, you know, has a good season, misses it by one spot. You don't know what that's going to do to someone as a Madden player. Do you throw in the towel? And this year he comes out, wins the challenger in Vegas when he was a huge underdog, makes noise at the Madden Classic, becomes the Tampa Bay Buccaneers club champion. And there goes Bo Jackson. He's here in ultimate weekend. Oh! Up by Joel! Sticky! Ew! Touchdown, Joel! Yeah, get a shot of that man, Joel CP! Because he just put on, he put Stevie on skates with that one. That was dirty, Scott. I need a replay at some point. It's that hole. What a way to respond if you Joel CP. Joel Crooms Porter from Washington, D.C. showing the stick work. He said it's something to be in the Hall of Fame, Scott, and he's making one a case stop. right there. And it's like Please. the movie Top Gun. You don't always need the need for speed. Sometimes you put on the brakes. Just let, let go of the stick by. and get nasty. Stevie tried to strafe, but strafed himself out of the play. Look at that. Look at that reaction. That was nasty. That stop and go move is by far my favorite move to watch in all the competitive Madden. You just make it looks good. You make your opponent look dumb. Such a good way to swag out there on the sticks. So a three-point game. With three, 12 to go. Uh-oh, here comes Stevie. And right there back goes Herschel Walker. They won't catch him. No stop and go, Neely. Oh, oh he won oh. one of his own. Oh. He won oh. one of his own. Oh. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Where's the song, Rico? Anything you can do, I can do better. He's got us up here singing. <laughs> Joel C.P. and Stevie J turning up over there. 3-0-4. Back-to-back impressive runs, and now it's Joel CP's chance. Good. If this goes to the house, I'm going to lose it. Oh, I, I can't deal with that. Look at this. Where is the stick work at? The stick work is in Steven Javaruski's sums. Get out of my way. I'm on my horse. I'm getting vintage, and look at the reaction. Let's Joel hear about it. Under three minutes to go. Oh, we're rocking in this game, Scott. Fourth quarter, four-point ball game, like you said, under three minutes. Stevie J's trying to get to the top of his division. Joel's trying to get out of the basement. Big game. Mariota, low throw. Ingram able to hold on. And we got tempo here. I get scared of that throw. Every time I see him throw it, Scott, I feel like the DB's just going to jump in front of that pitch and take it to the crib. I guess the, the big body of Ingram, who's naturally a tight end, sort of seals that guy off with a low throw. You remember, he's in a run and shoot offense. This isn't, this isn't the meta. And he's moving the ball on CBJ. But he needs, they can't just move it into field goal range. He's down four. Coming up on the two minute warning. 
If you're Joel CP, you got to turn this into a touchdown drive and respond. That one and three, you've fallen way behind in the ultimate league. This is a chance to get some momentum and turn the season around. Steven Javorowski is making that a difficult task. Joel CP. Let's get a quick update with Dave. Guys, it is going off the rails over here. Kiv down big, goes, punches it in on the ground first, and then... What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Kiv. Kiv is in the box. That's going to be a pick six right there. 38-10, just under two minutes left to play. All right, so goes running away with it. That means if Stevie J can hold on here, he'll be at the top of the division with Kiv. Second and 11. Ball at the 44. Good read. Gets the toes and bounds at the 32. Joel's numbers, 10 for 12, 105 yards. Just the one interception that hurt him. But he's marching right here, Coltrane. Three timeouts each. 99 seconds to go in the game. And Bo Trump. Jackson it's got Bo. destroyed. Mel Repro. Wow. Joel CP says Bo knows. Now the question is here, Joel, do you know what it's like to have to lock up in the fourth quarter up three with a minute 30 left? And that man, young Stevie J, has one of the nastiest run games in the league. Kablow. Boom. Use a truck. Bo's eating. Problem with Stevie J's been eating on the ground all season long. What can you do if you're Joel CP? That's the only halfback Bo Jackson we've seen in the league. That's that big time cap, big time power. One of the best running backs in the game. It's a goat addition. So it's not all the way geeked up, but he's still an 88. Just an 88 overall, which isn't, it's not bad. It's not great. But he does have back. a 95 version out there. Yeah, exactly. You can imagine how scary that is. That's the real deal. That's a lot of cap, though. No, nobody willing to spend that kind of cap on the running back. And if you're Joel, this is going to be hard to lock up because Stevie J with a minute and five and three uh -oh. timeouts, he's going to be able to do just this, run the ball and run his offense like he normally would. Those three timeouts are big. There he goes. He uses the first. And it's a different scenario than Joel was just in because a field goal will tie it. Yeah, so he just needs to worry about getting into that field goal range. Good secure tackle there by Amos. You got to stop this run if you're Joel. You said you felt good about your run defense. Stevie J's only averaging 50 yards through the air a game. So you can't let him do that. And there goes Herschel. There's room. And he's in field goal range. Oh, man. I feel like I'm flashback to the 80s. We got Herschel Walker from Georgia. You got Bo Jackson from Auburn. Both Heisman winners. And they're showing out for us. And that's what you get in Ultimate Team. You get a mix of the legends, the superstars. And you almost had Mariota get stripped by Joel CP. That would have been big. Second and one. At what point, if you're Joel CP, do you start using some timeouts? A little lucky right there by Stevie J. Usually you get a strip animation on that quarterback. The ball 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 Oh, the oh, luck has gone! High fight! High fight! Harder than anybody on this stage! Oh, oh, man. Oh, you can oh. see oh. the on. thrill of victory and the agony of defeat all at once. Oh, big head of fumble! And that's back-to-back -back using plays by Chelsea P showing some emotion, and he deserves it. He got the strip animation on the quarterback before that. Stevie holds it. Goes to the pitch. Joel says, bam, whack you right in the mouth. Cough it up, ball game. That was a good one. At the very least, you got to get the field goal there if you're Stevie J. Try to extend this game. But Joel CP, well, one of the biggest hits we've seen thus far, and it's a game changer. 27-24. Joel needed it, and he got it. And up on top, we didn't see much of it as Goes ran away 38 to 10 over Young Kiv. Some unbelievable matchups.
You had the running game on the bottom, you had the passing game on the top. And Goes and Joel got the wins when they needed them. And Andrea Lawrence is standing by with Joel, CP. Joel, congratulations on your win. The first one you had is week one, and now you have another one on the board. How do you feel? Uh, absolutely amazing. Stevie played an amazing game. I would say he was probably the hardest besides, I mean, everyone I lost to. But I, honestly, I think he was the hardest reason being is because not only because I won, but the way he played, he was really, really good. He was really smart switching it up from tight slots. He knew what I was doing. He knew I was slowing him down. In the second half, clearly he picked it back up and gave me a really, really good game. So shout out to Stevie. I mean, it's what, five more games left. Everyone got to fight. So, I mean, he should definitely be fine. And you're absolutely right. You have a nice amount of your season left. So kind of what's going to be your outlook as you head into that, knowing that you need to kind of dig yourself out of a hole? All right, well, I talk a lot of trash. Everyone knows this, but right now I'm playing like trash. So what I need to do is go home and just relax and lab and just get ready for the next matchups that I have. I need to stop being so cocky all the time. I mean, like at the end of the day, it's cool, but like I'm losing a lot of games right now and the Browns aren't cocky. So I need to at least step it up and play a little bit better just so I can at least cap a little bit for the first couple of quarters. Wow, well, it sounds like you have a good game plan, so good luck. Thank you. To you, Dave Enrico.